What's going on, everybody? This is Joshua Meekins, and you are now tuned in to Disruptors in the Culture. Uh, we <laughs> you know that we always start with announcements, so really, not even really quick. You know, I, I got to do a, a, a quick big ups to everybody. We had a major announcement the, this past couple weeks. Um, Disruptors in the Culture will be at Roots Picnic 2022. Uh, huge deal. You know, we, we said our thank yous, but again, thank you to everybody involved. Thank you, Wallow Gilly, for the selection. Um, it really means a lot, you know, knowing that Disruptors have come this far. We're going to be at Roots Picnic. For those who don't know, the dates are June 4th and 5th. We need everybody there to support. You know, we're going to continue to do episodes up until um, and past. You know, this doesn't stop there. This is a big accomplishment, you know, but we, we, we love the work that we do. So please, we need everybody to support. If you've listened to us, continue to listen to us, spread the word, follow our socials and all that stuff. And um, I think we're trying to figure out who we want to do for our guests for Roots Picnic. So if you guys can in the comments, please drop, you know, so, some ideas of who you think we should have and, and how that should go. But, you know, I, I wanted to make sure everybody knew that before we got started with today's episode. Roots Picnic is a huge deal. Um, so today, 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 we have um, a, a friend of mine who has you know, been, been dodging me when I've been trying to get him on the show, <laughs> but, um, Not you know, dodging. <laughs> <laughs> things have just come up, you know, you know, things have come up, but, um, the, the person that I am sitting next to, he's a, he's a frat brother, a friend of mine. Um, he's a aspiring and, and, and doing the work comedian. Like he's really is putting in the time, putting the effort, he's been traveling to get his, his name out there. Um, and I just think that, you know, him being the person that he is and putting in the work that he does, he's rightfully earned himself a spot as a disruptor and somebody that we consider a disruptor. So, um, you know, without further ado, and I'm going to let him introduce himself as they always do, we have uh, Mr. Cole Cosby. Clap me in. Uh, yeah. yeah. I got the uh, audience for you, kid. Appreciate you, Josh, man. Um, I'm glad to be considered a disruptor. Um, the culture is very important, and I'm glad to disrupt it. So. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. So, you know, we, we always start off the show, you know, we ask you who you are and how do you define what, we, what you do? You know, we don't like to define the creators and the people that we work with. So you want to give you the you know opportunity to do that. Uh, yeah. Normally it depends on who's asking. I'm, I'm either an engineer. Mm. If, if, uh, if somebody's asking during the day and if somebody's asking at night, I'm a um, stand up comedian, bro. That sounds like a superhero. If you, if you want to yes. know the truth. You're out here solving the world's problems and making people laugh <laughs> at night. Stanley didn't make it yet. It's, uh, <laughs> it's coming out. You may got to sneak that one yourself. So, 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 as far as I've known you, you know, you've you've really been kind of just on the comedy hustle. Like I know you, I've seen you perform. I've seen your set or a snippet of your set. That joint was fire. I was laughing. I was I was pleasantly surprised. Appreciate you, bro. Yeah, because <laughs> <laughs> normally when I talk to you, man, like I know you're funny, but like to see you actually, you know, pull the punchlines when you need to and kind of orchestrate a show is is, is phenomenal. So, like, how did how did you first get into comedy? Uh, first got into comedy. Um, my first experience where I can really remember it clearly was when me and my best friend got a laugh at my pain mm. um bootleg okay i forget how we got it but it was the bootleg tape somebody recorded in the theater kevin hart's laugh at my pain and we watched it and we were crying i just knew like yo this is this is cool this is somebody's actual job that they get to like get paid making people laugh because i knew that's what i love to do okay is making people laugh so i remember that clearly and then just laughing with my dad growing up like all the jokes that we had i just knew that comedy was something i came up on okay so it's always kind of been like ingrained in you would you say like like yet that was the household always funny or like like what was the energy with that yeah the household was definitely always jokes bro every single second my dad is trolling me to this day <laughs> like because i i grew up basically an only child i got a half sister but mm -hmm. but she didn't live with us that much um so I was just there, so he was just grilling me a lot. Yeah. So he was joking around. We watched a lot of shows together, mm -hmm. um, sitcoms, stuff like that, and he would really get me to appreciate what's funny and what's not. So Okay. Yeah. I feel like that's always important. Like a, a good comedian knows how to find the comedy in things, you know what I mean? Yeah, Kind of yeah. how to develop that. So it's it's interesting to see that, like even like having somebody in your life who really kind of started that staple of, Okay, you know this is this is kind of where you find that 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 love that passion points. So I I know we were talking a little bit before the show too. Like I don't think anybody really knows or talks about what the comedic grind looks like. So for like an upcoming comedian, somebody who's like really trying to get into the game, what what is 
I guess what does a normal weekend and or night look for you? Normal weekend and night? Uh, let's think. Well, a normal night during the week, you're trying to hit mics. Mm. You're trying to and grind what's, out. What's mics? Open mics, yeah. Oh, so open there's mics. See, we need we need the lingo. Break it down, bro. Yeah, yeah, bro. So there's there's open mics throughout the city. Uh, mm. They're at bars, scattered all like downtown. Manny Young, you can find them wherever you need to find them. But um, basically, you go. You can do like five to ten minutes on these mics. Uh, you sign up. You get to work out your new material. Mostly, these mics just have other comics in the crowd, so yeah. it's not the best crowd. Some rough nights. <laughs> not gonna lie, you there late in front of a crowd. Yeah. Just comics at one a.m. <laughs> <laughs> are they are comics like hard people to make laugh? They definitely it? are. I go to these shows and I don't laugh that much, bro. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I don't laugh that much, bro. But that's just how it is because you're kind of looking at it not as like an audience member. Yeah. You're kind of looking at it as like content. Yeah, critical, like critically, like oh, let me see if this guy like. So yeah, those crowds at mics are definitely hard to entertain. But if you know if you can make them laugh, then when you go to an actual crowd of paying customers, that yeah. that joke is fire. So. Yeah, but that's what a normal weeknight looks like. Um, mics. Then on the weekend, you're trying to get booked on shows, so you're doing yeah. a guest spot on somebody's shows, or you're booked on a show yourself. Yeah. So. Okay. And so, like, when you when you get booked on a show, is it like you get booked in a Philly show, New York show? Are you traveling? Like, what kind of what kind of experience is that like? Yeah, uh, I did a New York show in January uh, at this club called Stand Up NY. Mm -hmm. uh, that was my first time doing a a set in a New York club. Um, in a few years, so that's gonna be more to come. But mainly, I'm in Philly. Mm. I've been um starting to conquer the the Philly scene, starting to get more notoriety. So that's been nice. Yeah. Um, I just hosted a weekend at at Helium. My first time being booked to host a weekend at a comedy club. So that yeah. was cool. So uh, okay. Tony Roberts was the headliner. Yeah. Shout out Tony Roberts. I saw that. OG. Okay. So, yeah. Okay. Real quick, when you just just tilt the mic a little bit, when you so you make sure you're still speaking into it. Oh, right. when you turn your head, it just cuts the audio just a little bit. Oh, when I do this, right? Yeah. So oh, right. turn, there you go. Perfect. Oh, I bet. Keep it mobile. Perfect. I don't know how I like how this looks though. <laughs> put it right here. So when <laughs> I think one of the things you talk about is hosting, right? Yeah. So when you're hosting a show, is there a difference between like hosting a show and then being like an actual comic in the set? Like, what's the difference? Is there a type of different energy you got to bring? Or, like, how does that kind of break down? So there's not much of a difference. Um, there's definitely not much of a difference. You're kind of just doing your set off the top. Yeah. Um, but you kind of want to make the people, like, feel, like, welcome to the show. So you kind of want to open your set with a little, like, oh, like, how y'all doing? Like, you don't want to kind of just jump right into your set. Yeah. You kind of want to have a little, little bit of material or crowd work to make them feel welcome. And then you can kind of just get the ball rolling with your jokes. So, um not not too different. Yeah. Okay. That's solid. And a guy like me, I'm not really I'm not really doing much improv anyway. I'm kind of hitting your jokes, so so I get kind of right into it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I got you. I got you. So, even with the Tony Roberts part you just talked about. So, how is that working one with Tony Roberts and then two like is is hosting for somebody that, you know, uh, would you say like you kind of look up to Tony Roberts like artistic style when it comes to comedy? Yeah, so he first of all, shout out to him. He was cool all weekend um a lot of people don't got to be cool they like I was they say, can just, yeah. so he was definitely cool and um was giving me wisdom all weekend so shout out to him but um yeah it was cool working with him i got to see how a true professional like grinds out a weekend like yeah. headlining five shows in Jeez. in three days that's he was on stage for about 50 minutes um two shows friday two shows saturday and then a show sunday so to get to see that up close and personal was definitely a an eye-opening experience because it was a crazy pace for me having to do about 15 minutes on each of those shows yeah. so i can't imagine him doing 50 minutes on them so that's one crazy. day that's yeah. that's crazy all right like even like being i guess coming from like the acting perspective like when the camera's on you got to be on so yeah. i imagine like you have to have your set down you have to have your jokes hit and if you if, if they're not hitting you got an audible yeah you know and he's mean? and yeah he's he kind of has a different style than me mm -hmm. like I'm way more laid back, but he's high, like he's sweating by the end of his set. So he's he's really working out up there. It's, so it was it was a pleasure to watch. He had the energy. It was it was going, man. It okay. was going. That's fire. So <laughs> if are there other comedians that you feel like you know are on your like I want to work with list, or like anybody that you would like you know love to 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 be a part of, host for, or anything like that? 
So like, give me your give me your Mount Rushmore, your your five in no particular order, comedians that you would love to work with. F- four or five? Let's do five. Let's I, do five. I feel like five is a safe space. Four is like always like who's the one that gets kind of cut. I got you with my five. Um, Dave Chappelle. Okay. Uh, just off the strength of the sketch comedy show, Chappelle show, that's a staple to the culture. Absolutely. And his stand-up specials are genius, straight genius. So Chappelle. Mm-hmm. Two, I'm going to give a, it might shock people, but Jerry Seinfeld, man. Jerry, Jerry Seinf- Seinfeld. Jerry Seinfeld has, has to be on that. I just think Seinfeld is the greatest um, – sitcom of all time yeah. like just structurally just like you you can make an episode about anything like yeah there's really the no show about nothing yeah bro so seinfeld gets that that's one of the shows me and my dad used to watch together so um, mm. and i think my style of stand-up is um heavily influenced by this type of comedy dry humor stuff like that gotcha. that you see on there so um seinfeld two uh three shout out bill cosby uncle bill okay um first show to portray black people in a positive educated yeah. light shout out bill cosby that's not a popular thing to say these days mm. i'm not trying to get the disruptors canceled but <laughs> that's that's big bro so um four you gotta go kevin okay i feel like he's the hardest working man in hollywood kevin be everywhere kevin man. Hart. yeah man it's crazy um i've read his book so i kind of know a little bit about what he was doing yeah. and how he was really Really grinding, going to and from New York, mm. driving back and forth. Yeah. And to do what he's doing now is crazy. All these movies, specials. So, um, Kevin Four mm. and uh, Five, I'm going to have to go with Eddie. Eddie Murphy. Mm. Delirious stand up special. And he was kind of doing what Kevin was doing now, like yeah. just dominating the movie scene, stuff like that. So, and the thing about Eddie that I love so much, I feel like Eddie. Like when Eddie was doing a show, he was like yeah. doing a show. Like his fits to his jokes to his the nature that yeah, he, he was, was a rock doing, star, bro. A rock star, <laughs> a rock star. And it's it's crazy because like I think that's um, as much as Kevin uh, I think says it a lot. Like that's what he tries to emulate. You know what I'm saying? He wants to be a comedic rock star. Yeah. He wants to be up there on stage. He wants to say the stuff. He wants to do the things. Like I think he does. A, he comes pretty darn close. You know what I'm saying? Like that's Kevin Hart is crazy. That he's he's my generation's Eddie. Like, yeah. f- to see him from where he was, even like in, I think it was Paper Soldiers, and then continue <clears throat> to grind from there and like become what he has become. Like that's that's not easy. You know what I'm saying? That's not an easy feat. Yeah, man. So um, and as far as like someone not legend wise who I mm-hmm. love to work with, Michael Che, man. Shout out Michael so, on- Che. Honorable mention to Michael Che. Why bro. is that? Uh, number one, he's the f- the first head writer of SNL. Mm-hmm. SNL is one of the longest running s- sketch com- just comedy shows running on television and he's uh the first black head writer so shout out to that that's a nothing to scoff at and he has his own um sketch comedy show called that damn michael che which is hilarious where it's he on gets, hbo max right yeah i've w- seen it okay I was where he gets to get get off some of his uh his ideas that aren't um i guess tasteful enough for mm. snl yeah so that's hilarious and his stand-up specials like he's just he's just a smart dude yeah. so yeah Okay, Michael Che, shout out to him. So I I, I know mm-hmm. that even a lot of stuff that we talked about, like that stand up level and the the writing level is like in, incredible. You know, I feel like that's where a lot of comedians kind of build their corner. But one of the things that have like really taken comedy to a turn is social media. So like yeah. I've seen like <clears throat> the rifts between like old head comedians saying like, hey, social media comedy is a different type of comedy. How do you feel like you know what social media's role has been in comedy? And like, where do you kind of see like what? How have you kind of <coughs> navigated that space? Because you've done both, I think, at this point, right? Yeah, yeah. I try. I was kind of hesitant to be honest with you, Josh, yeah. to to dabble into the social media stuff. I was one of those kind of people who had um, the old ideology, like, no, nah, like stand up. Yeah. You gotta go to mics and go to shows and stuff like that. And then my friends like, no, nah, man, these these people are getting famous and like going yeah. viral off of like dumb stuff, bro. Like you yeah. could just like, why not just try it? So I've tried to do it a little more but i still don't like kind of how some people have been able to avoid some of the the grind that stand-ups have to go through to get to a certain point by just having something go viral but it's definitely a skill to it because i've i'm trying and i've not been viral (laughs) yet so i'm definitely not about to hate on it that and it takes a work ethic like there's definitely a work ethic to it because they say like to go viral you got to be posting like 
three like videos a day, like really? minimum. Yeah, like they say, like wow. if you're trying to get your TikTok, the algorithm to really start hitting, you yeah. got to have that stuff hitting people's feed like at, le- wow. at least three times a day. I'm like, yeah. that sounds like <laughs> that, that sounds like content, man. That sounds like more work than just going to this mic. Honestly, <laughs> so he said, I'm gonna just go to the mic and you can record what I had there and we'll just put it out. Yeah, man, and my self esteem. Like you, you do all this work, you put a sketch out there. Yeah. <laughs> you get no likes. You're like, said, <laughs> you're like, dang. <laughs> what is it, what is that like? Like even when you do like like mics and open mics, like do you ever like you ever get a joke off, nobody laugh, and you're kind of just like, well, I'm gonna get off stage. Like, what's the self esteem <laughs> level that goes on with, goes on with that? Yeah, I, I could share I could share a bomb story. I okay. could definitely share. a bomb I would story. love to hear a bomb story. <laughs> <laughs> I have um a pretty amazing bomb story. Okay. Um, up until this bomb, I had been doing like pretty much like well at every show I've yeah. ever done like like pretty much well at every show like there's never been a show where it was like damn like that went bad like yeah every everything had been kind of well so I get to this show a frat brother Q yeah you you know <laughs> you know Bucket you know you gotta yes. know Bucket yes. <laughs> Bucket hits me up he's like they're doing a fashion show at Cheney mm. and they need intermission acts okay I'm like, all right, I'll go to Cheney, yeah. right? I invited a girl to come with me, okay. someone who I was trying to impress. Okay. I was at the point where comedy was like. That was your little clutch. Like, yeah. You that, <laughs> <laughs> it was an easy joint. Like, I'm, yeah. go, I'm about to kill this joint. I'm about yeah. to look like bull. It's about to be, <laughs> it's about to be lit. We about to go down to Cheney. This is, the setup is crazy yes. right now. I'm going to just. <laughs> so, so this is about to be an easy road trip. So we get down to Cheney. And I'm late. I'm thinking I'm getting there like right around intermission. Yeah. But it's it was starting late. Mm-hmm. So it wasn't intermission yet. So the fashion part's still going on. Mm-hmm. I get there. They're like, Yeah, here's your mic. There's gonna be two rappers before you, and then you're gonna go. Interesting. Okay. So I had to follow two rappers. Okay. Already set up bad right there. <laughs> well, the yeah. rapper's good. Let me just. I, I don't remember, man. It was kind of. <laughs> because first thing, I thought it was going to be a small room. Like, I thought it was yeah. going to be like a, in a student center. This was in an auditorium. So, oh. I, so it was like a bunch of students in an auditorium, yeah. big stage. I'm like, oh, like, this is actually, it's actually a big kind of deal. Yeah. So I'm like, okay. So intermission hits. Two SoundCloud rappers go. Um. <laughs> And then it's my turn. So then they like, yeah, you ready for some comedy? And then everybody, like, you know, like, black people, like, comedy? <laughs> who, like, who? Like, <laughs> I'm like, oh, God, this is about to go great. They're like, yeah, we got a comedian here. They're like, y'all ready? Hey, Cole, you ready? I'm backstage. I'm like, I guess. <laughs> They're like, all right, come on out. No music. They didn't oh. have any music. So I stay backstage. I stay backstage. Mm-hmm. And I'm like... I'm waving them to me. Mm-hmm. I'm like, they're like, what? I'm like, come here. I'm like, yo, y'all got any music for me to come out to? I'm like, they about to have me come out here cold to a bunch of like <laughs> black kids who don't know who I am. Like, come on, man, at least give me like something to come out to. Like, all right, well, what do you, what song? I'm like, bro, any song, it doesn't matter. Yeah. So they play a song. I come out. Immediately, everyone starts trolling me. Everyone. <laughs> boo, boo, get the. Started cursing me out. It was yeah. bad. Like, didn't want to hear anything I was saying, man. Like, and, and a lot of my set is, like, about being from the suburbs. Yeah. A shout out South Jersey. Um, <laughs> a lot of my set is about being from the suburbs, engineering. A lot of, like, scholarly stuff, like, that, <laughs> that they weren't trying to hear. They weren't. Like, they were like, what, man? I was like, anybody an uh, engineering major? I feel like they don't even offer engineering <laughs> at the way they, The way they look. <laughs> The way they looked at me, man, it was crazy. So I'm like, oh God, what do I, what do I go to now? So I started this porn joke I had. Mm-hmm. Had this joke about porn freaking like, all right, this is a little stupid, silly joke. Everybody probably watch porn in here. This should go well. Yeah. Start doing the joke. Two seconds into the joke, I lied to you not. Somebody comes from backstage with a broom. A whole broom, like it's the Apollo, bro, comes. Oh. And sweeps me off of the stage. Oh no! Mind you, I invited somebody here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
this was the wildest thing that could ever happen. <gasps> this had nothing remotely close to this has ever happened to me up until oh, this point. Wow. I was like, yo, this is an experience. I get off stage. I honestly start snapping. I would have snapped too. I start snapping. I'm like, because like I've done cool stuff up until that point. So I'm like, <laughs> like you're not about to treat me like this. Y'all like, gonna I'm do like, this to me? Yeah, like <laughs> I'm like, yo, who who's running this? Like <laughs> I'm like, who who just subjected me to this? I'm like, bro. I'm like, why did y'all just do this? They was like, yeah, the advisor of the org didn't know you were gonna start talking about porn. And um, they didn't that know. That was the line? Yeah, we did, they didn't know you were going to start talking about porn, and we they said we had to get you off stage immediately mm. somehow. I'm like, well, like, word of advice, you could have played some music. You could have flashed the light. Yeah. You could have cut my mic. You could have done a multitude of things that was less embarrassing and had me drive an hour and a half down here to <laughs> West Wet, whatever, Cheney, <laughs> to get freaking, like, bro. Had people coming up to me backstage like it's cool, bro. Don't <laughs> worry. <laughs> Trying to consult. Don't worry about it, bro. I'm like, do you know who I am? <laughs> it's like not like. <laughs> but still, I'm like, yo, don't console me. I've done shows. Like, I'm like, this is a bad situation. Don't don't put this on me. It was wow. bad. Wow, that was bad, man. So then, like, I've never had a more silent ride home, bro. It was. <laughs> Was the girl with you in the car? Yeah, like we ah. drove. We, she came with me. <laughs> Never had a more silent ride home. You she, hit her with the. You she wanna, was you like, stop at Chick Fil A. She, <laughs> <laughs> she was like, she asked me. She was like, are you? Ah. When she saw me backstage after it happened, yeah. she she said, are you okay? And I had to play like, man, come on, <laughs> okay, like, of course I'm okay. Like, it's another day. Oh, freaking crying inside! Like, oh. <laughs> oh my god, man! Did she? The question is, did she hit you up after, or is it the last time y'all talked? Oh no, she she did. She gave me another chance. So like, <laughs> I guess the fact that I was able to take that to the chin and not like be like <laughs> crying in in the back, I must have showed that I was I was cool. So wow, yeah. <laughs> okay, that's that's an experience. Like I I I one I couldn't imagine. I'd have crumbled right on stage. I would have been done for. That is that is crazy. And then two months after that, I got to open up for Sinbad. So it's like, wow, it's crazy how one one day you getting like <laughs> <laughs> swept off. Stage. Yeah, swept off stage literally. And I had the tape. I had yeah. I had bucket recorded for me. He was wow, a, he was recording. Hold on to that. Like let like let, keep that. Piece. Yeah, that's gonna be like <laughs> if I ever have some cootie like documentary yeah. type shit. That's. That's a that's a gold mine. I'll be looking at that like wow. I look back. I'm on stage. I literally look back. Everybody starts trolling. I'm like, what? Is somebody literally with a whole I'm like, like you can see the, you can see the surprise on my face. I'm like, yo, no, they oh, didn't. Man. Yo, so like I hate Cheney now. Like, <laughs> I mean that's that's justified <laughs> reason. I ain't gonna hold you. That is that is justified reason. So what how do you the question would be like, how do you what oh, obviously Sinbad is a nice little bounce back. But like when when something doesn't go wrong, like when a, when a set or a punchline doesn't hit the way it's supposed to, how do you then you know bounce back after that? Like what do you how do you, what are your reps? So before when a punchline didn't hit well, I would just roll over it and just go to the next joke. Yeah. But now I'm getting to a point where like if something doesn't hit well, my natural reaction to like the crowd not not responding to that joke how I want it. Yeah. I'll come up with a tag to that. Like, I'll say something. If nobody responds, I'll have something to follow that up. Yeah. Like, basically making fun of, like, them for not responding to the first part. Got you. So now I'm able to kind of roll over a couple dead spots a little better because yeah. I'll have something prepared <clears throat> prepared for um, when something doesn't go well. Got you. you. Know? Okay. Wow. Okay. I was not expecting to get something like that. Is That is that is comedy. Oh yeah, yeah, man. It's it's trial and error. Like the, when you try a joke over and over again, and some people laugh at it, and then you notice when some people don't, yeah. you'll just naturally come up with little extra add-ons to that to maybe get people who didn't find it funny to enjoy that part again. I got so, you. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So this, I know for this part of the show, what we usually do is we 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 kind of get some inspirational. <laughs> sorry, some inspirational pieces from like. 
like kind of how you develop yourself. So like one of the ways that we kind of said is like who or what like keeps you inspired. Like how do you feel like um you know you're in this realm, you're in this energy, you got to keep yourself motivated. So what who or what kind of keeps you inspired through that? Uh, a lot of people that keep me inspired are like some of the cl- like close friends that I have. Like mm. I wouldn't say close friend. Well, yeah, I, I be running two K with my man, so that that's close. That's friend. close. That's close. Yeah, and I've known him for a few years now. Um, shout out Anthony Moore. Um, he keeps me inspired because he's someone who I know kind of on a personal level who's doing like pretty cool stuff. Yeah. Um, so seeing him do that keeps me going. But um, just the 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 goal of not having a nine to five keeps me going, honestly. Mm-hmm. That just being able to do something and pay my bills off of nightlife and doing like cool work and something that I can not be like, Oh God, I'm in a cubicle all day. Yeah. So that keeps me going. But definitely seeing like friends that I have, um, like I told you earlier, I was in New York last night yeah. just hanging out and um Another friend of mine, Reggie Conquest, was there. Mm. He's doing a lot of cool stuff. Um, TSA Bay, I don't know if you watch Insecure. The, yes. The big dude who yes. was. Yeah. He's a Philly comic. I didn't know that. Yeah, he's a Philly comedian, and um, he's doing really cool stuff. That um, He just had a cameo in Abbott Elementary. He was the, yeah. lu- the lunch. Um, I did see that. Yeah, the lunch boy, yeah. So <laughs> he's. Um, I just saw him last night at the Comedy Cellar, and we talked. I've done stuff with him. So seeing him do the cool stuff he's doing anthony yeah. as well as not wanting to work <laughs> i mean <laughs> keeps me keeps me motivated shoot. yeah so how do you keep that balance though like the balance in your life so you're obviously you're traveling you know you're doing what you're doing uh during a weekday how does that balance where does the cold time come in as far as like just time for yourself you know sometimes stepping away from the art or and sometimes just getting time to like you know level yourself oh yeah yeah, yeah. so um I find I have a lot of time for myself, honestly, man. Um, work isn't that demanding. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll keep I'll keep it at that. Um, so I have a lot of time to just uh, wind down, <laughs> wind down, play two K. Yeah. But um, yeah, and I and I I go to mics like I I'm more selective with the mics I go to. Like I don't. There's some co- comics who go to mics every night. Yeah. And I feel like it wears them out. And if you have new material to to test out every night, I feel like it makes sense. But um, a lot of these people go to mics and they're just doing the same jokes over and over again. Yeah. And um, I don't know what you're really developing there. So um, I'm real selective with which nights I go out, make sure I have something new to test out when I'm there. Mm-hmm. I'm not just there like doing jokes that I already know work or already know don't work, stuff like that. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. You a music fan, Cole? I never asked you that. Yeah, bro. Like you, a heavy, you would say you had like a heavy, like a hip hop head, or like any specific genre you love. Yeah, I, I like to say I'm a hip hop head. I mean, I I got a couple homies who have made my my music taste look very mainstream. Mm-hmm. They know a lot of obscure sound <laughs> SoundCloud people, but uh, no, I, I definitely think I definitely think I'm a hip hop head. Okay. So I'm say. A, this next question going to hit then. So if you had to pick a mixtape and or album to describe the place you are in your life right now. A what would that be? mixtape or album. Yeah. Hmm. That, that's my, one of my favorite questions. Shout out to Mira. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. I'm trying to think, but describe where I'm at. Mm-hmm. Let me, let me check my... Now take your time. Go into the playlist. I don't want to just say something and then fabricate a reason <laughs> on why, why that makes sense. You say, yeah, I'm going to just go with the latest Drake album because, you know, that's where I'm at. It can be anything new. It can be anything old. Yeah, I'm, I'm definitely going to my recently added. Mm-hmm. And do you have like a... Per- Actually, also, do you have a preferred walkout song? You know what I'm saying? Something that gets you excited before you get out on set. I've been doing a lot of Young Thug. Uh, young Thug, I, I come out to a lot. Yeah. Um, when I was at Helium with Tony Roberts, I was coming out to a lot of Cake. Shout out Gunna. Shout out that new Gunna mm-hmm. album. That shit was fire. Um, yeah, so definitely a lot of Gunna, a lot of a lot of Thug. For the Sinbad show, I came out to Kendrick though, because Kendrick is mm. one of my one of my guys. So um, I came out to Humble. Mm. <laughs> so you don't think that. 
so in front of fifteen hundred <laughs> old white people <laughs> came out came out to humble. Okay. I'm still trying to think of that uh, an album that describes where I'm at in life though. Mm. I mean I'm light skinned. I could do certified lover boy, I don't know. <laughs> hey why and why certified lover boy? I mean, no, that's definitely uh, certified lover boy might be the exact opposite of where I'm at in life. Okay. Right now. <laughs> There's a bunch of pregnant women on the cover. All right, that's not. That's not where I'm at. I won't go hold you. That's a, that, that was a very creative. So <laughs> when did you when that album first came out? Did you notice that the cover art moves when it first like is displayed? Oh, you like how like the new Apple Music yeah like, has the little gifts up top. Yeah, the cover art. The people are blinking. I don't know if you can tell. Like the the, the women are blinking. Oh yeah. Oh, so, I've never noticed that. Yo. Was, I tell yo. you. So everybody was waiting for the Drake release, right? You know, album <laughs> comes out. I'm like, all right, cool. It's like one or two in the morning. I'm like, I'm up. I'm gonna listen to it. I'm looking at the cover art. And I'm like, <laughs> you thought you was high or something? I was like, what is? Is, is this moving, <laughs> bro? I think I thought I was high right now. I'm like, yo, <laughs> that is crazy. They're blinking. They're looking at you. Look at them. I'm like, this is this is wild. Super wild. Um. Yeah, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go exclusive. Okay. No, I, I just lied. Elusive. I just butchered my man's album. <laughs> um, Josh Johnson. Okay. He's a comedian. He um he does writing on the Daily Show for Trevor Noah, and I got to host for him earlier um, last year. Yeah. And he dropped a music album. Kind of. He's trying to do like, kind of like what Gambino does, yeah. like little comedy music type thing. And um, in the in the album, he's describing where he is, like just coming up in comedy a little bit, like just trying to rise in that. So, okay, I'll give him a shout out with that album. Yeah, you can follow me at Vil Cosby, <laughs> V I L L E Cosby. Why Vil Cosby? Cole? That's a great question. Like, what is that? I'll tell you what it is. It sounds like Bill Cosby, but I'm from Sicklerville, New Jersey. Sicklerville, New Jersey. Shout out. Shout out the Ville. I uh, thought that was the cleverest thing ever. <laughs> Ville Cosby, Bill Cosby. <laughs> you can't make this stuff up, man. That's at Ville Cosby, Twitter, TikTok, Twitch, Instagram. Yeah, man. Okay. Ville Cosby. Solid. Solid. 